Okay, good. We're, we're rolling. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Taryn Kendall. I'm the co-president of the JJMS PTO. Thank you everyone for being here this morning. Um, I just wanted to quickly let people know about the uh, picture makeup day session, which is going to take place on January 27th from 4 to 8 p.m. You should have received an email about it. If you haven't, just reach out to the PTO and we'll make sure to give you all the information you need. And for those of you who already had photos taken, uh, we talked to Life Touch. They should be sending everything out and we should be getting packages into the middle school on Monday. So hopefully you'll be getting them next week. Um, and that includes, that's if you pre-ordered or if you're just waiting for a proof before you order. Um, so I think that covers it for PTO announcements and I'll turn it over to um, Anne-Marie. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anne-Marie McSweeney. I'm the eighth grade uh, counselor for all eighth grade students. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a bit about my role as a counselor this year in very interesting times. And then I'm going to talk about the eighth to ninth grade transition in terms of course selections and all that stuff. Uh, I believe the chat is enabled. Uh, so if you have any specific questions that are more general in nature that you would like to type in there, feel free. I will try at the very end to answer some of those questions. Um, and time permitting, if we run out of time, please feel free to email me. I'll have my email at the end. Um, it's amaxsweeney at kalschools.org. Please feel free to email me there, any questions that you have, and I'm happy to answer them. Um, okay, so I am new to all these, uh, these webinar things, so please bear with me. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, let's hopefully I'll do this correctly. And if I don't, oh, okay. Can someone give me a thumbs up? Can hopefully you guys all see that? Yeah, you're good. All right, great. So I'll just start. How do I describe my role as a counselor at JJMS in 2021? And I guess I'll just say this. I just like to help. Helping's my favorite. Uh, this is not the way I expected the year to be in my office by my lonesome. Um, it's been very challenging, um, but I think what I do like is to help and try to support in any way I can in very challenging times for all of us. And I think as a school, I think we've done the absolute best that we can do. I think we have a great team in place and we work really well together. We have, I think we've all become very close because of this. Um, zooming in each other's houses last spring. Everyone saw my really messed up basement, so we really got a chance to bond. Um, but I'm happy to help kids in any way I can. And some of the things that I used to do, like having groups of students in my office, I have not been able to do that this year. So I've done a lot of different things, like whether it's calling, uh, calling families about students who had to quarantine, or if I had to run down to a classroom to cover for a teacher, or talk to a student and parent that are upset about not being able to get onto a Zoom link. So I consider my role this year as kind of a catch-all and a different role, but nevertheless important. And I think when it came down to it, I thought about just what are my priorities this year? Um, the main things I came up with are just really four questions and they're, they're hard to fix, uh, but we try our best to to reach out to students and help in any way we can. And the questions I came up with are, do students feel safe? Do they feel secure? Do they feel supported? And probably one of the hardest ones is, uh, do they feel connected? Um, obviously very hard when students are in their bedrooms or online or in a home office. And some students, I have not seen some students since last March. So that's been very challenging. And I, I know having spoken to many students and to parents, I know that it's very hard to connect at this point. But I think we have as a group tried to, to think of a lot of different ways to connect with students, maybe not in the meaningful way that we're used to, but I nevertheless, I think we have made some good efforts and we continue to try to think of new ways to have kids feel part of the community as we head into the new year. And I'm hoping with some hope on the horizon for all of us. Um, so some of the new ways we've been connecting this year, as you know, Zoom meetings, that's a big one. Um, not only have I been connecting with students on Zoom, but I've also occasionally, when need be, for students who've been a little more resident, reticent to reach out, 
I've even gotten into a couple breakout rooms and asked teachers if I can speak to students privately. Uh, that's one way I've been able to connect with students. Um, I also have some short distance in-person meeting with some students. If kids are here in the building, some students have come into my office and we've had quick meetings. Um, but I would say most recently, most of my meetings have been on Zoom. Uh, but I do see students in the hallways here at school. And, I'm, uh, and I always look to see if I can see students in person as much as possible. But obviously, given the circumstances, that's not always the case. Calendly invites. This is something I started this year where I send invites to students and asking them to reach out to me and make an appointment to meet with me. This has been surprisingly much more successful than I first anticipated. Um, some students, I do invite them when I have a concern or if a parent has given me some information or asked me to reach out or a teacher. Um, and some students have also made appointments on their own. Uh, Wednesdays has been a big day for meetings. I meet with a lot of students on Wednesdays since they don't have as many Zooms on that day. So that's been great. And I've been really happy with the amount of kids willing to participate on Zoom. That was tough in the spring. Kids were more shy about that, but I think now they've become a lot more comfortable uh, with the platform. We do a lot more messaging on Schoology and increased use of email. That's something that's very new. Up until this point, my emails and messaging with students has been pretty minimal. Uh, but this year, kids reach out to me for all sorts of reasons, which is really great. And there are some kids that would much rather message me than talk to me in person, which I don't take any offense to. I totally get it. Um, so I'm looking forward to even moving forward, especially as we're talking about course selections. I hope that kids take the opportunity to send me messages about any questions that they have, especially if they can't stop by my office to ask me. Um, I'm a pretty fast typer, so I'm happy to message any kid who reaches out. And I'm pretty quick about it, I like to say. So hopefully I can keep that going. And Schoology updates. I now have a Schoology uh, page that parents are also you are also all a part of. I'm starting to populate it with new files and forms and information about eight to nine um, course selections. That'll be really more up and running and published next week when I go into classes. I don't want to publish most of the information yet until kids get an opportunity to hear my presentation next week. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but it's been great. I can send kids updates on everything. Like I sent an update the other day saying, heads up, I'm going into your foreign language classes next week about course selections or just a reminder, um, it's a day one again, don't forget. So it's been a great way just to communicate with kids and then kids will send me follow-up questions. Um, so it's good to know that somebody is reading it. <laughs> All right, looking ahead to spring. Um, from a non-core selection perspective, um, I, haven't, I was not able to do my uh, fall guidance lesson that I do with the kids. Obviously, there's a lot of other priorities that took um, precedence, uh, but I am looking to go into the classrooms in March and April. Um, this is something that we've done every year to kind of talk about next year, reflecting upon who they are as a student, their interests and hobbies, and how are they going to get involved uh, at the high school. Um, I'll also be encouraging them to, to even get involved with something this year, since we do have clubs and activities um, in here at the middle school this year and more increased uh, opportunities. Uh, so I'm hoping that kids will get involved this year, but also talking about how they plan to get involved with the John Jay High School community. Um, I will be reviewing a high school resume and some college essays, not really talking about college, but more about reading about some students that have reflected upon their high school career. I think kids find that very motivating and exciting to hear about uh, high school students and how they reflected upon their time at the high school. Um, we will then be doing an activity where they'll be writing a, um, a little letter to their high school counselor, whoever that may be, introducing themselves. Um, and that'll be something that I will be passing along to their high school counselors. Um, but I think my biggest takeaway from that meeting will be focusing on being responsible, independent, and most importantly, proactive. Um, you know, as we get into high school years, it's more and more important that it's great to hear from moms and dads, but it's even more important for us to hear from students and for them to get involved with their education and the choices that are made because ultimately it's their life. Um, so kids tend to get enjoy that lesson because it's all about them and their goals and dreams. Um, so I'm looking forward to um, pushing into the classroom. Not sure how I will do that yet, 
um, whether it be virtually or in the classroom, but that will definitely take place sometime in the spring. Okay, the meet, the scheduling process. Obviously today we have our PTO meeting. Um, starting next week, I will be doing a virtual presentation to all students in their world language classes. Um, there are a couple students that go to the high school and a couple students that do not take a foreign language. Uh, with those situations, I will be reaching out to them individually, but I also am doing my presentation. I'm pre-recording a big piece of the presentation ahead of time. And my goal is that way everyone gets the exact same presentation. And then when I play it for them live on Zoom, they can then chat questions and ask me questions and I'll be able to type back answers because I won't be speaking. Um, you know, it's also nice not to have to say the same thing 12 times, but this way everyone gets the same message and I don't have to worry about missing any points. Um, so I will be recording that on Friday afternoon in my office. And I will also take a chance to also screen share, show them how to reach my Schoology page to access forms. Ultimately, what we, what we will be talking about are all the electives that will be offered at the high school, how many they can choose, the timeline on that, answer any questions. Um, the kids love that presentation. I think if you ask most of, the high, most of the counselors here, it's probably the thing that we love to do is eight to nine. It's a very positive, exciting conversation. And I feel like even the kids, when they go, oh no, not a social emotional lesson, they all love talking about their courses for next year and what they're excited to do. So everyone knows, we know it's a winner. We know the kids will be excited about it. So I think it's, uh, it's probably one of the presentations that I like the most. I think other counselors will probably agree. Uh, then on the 27th, there will be a um, high school curriculum night that you will be able to uh, participate in virtually. I believe it's more like a choose your own adventure uh, type of situation where parents can go online and click on different links and learn about some of the curriculum. I do think there may be some opportunities for Zooms and emailing of teachers. Um, I'm not too well versed in that because I believe they're, they're ironing out the details, but that will be on the 27th. Um, and I'm, I know you'll be getting a connect ed about that moving forward. Okay, so the week of January 25th, that will be um, the week where the math, science, and world language teachers will be um, meeting with students individually to tell them verbally and in private what their recommendation is for next year. So for example, if your student, if your child is in standard math eight, they will be recommended, um, they will just go on to, um, they'll be recommended for either Algebra 1 or Algebra 1 Extended. Algebra 1 Extended is the actual same exact Algebra 1 course. And then there's an every other day math lab uh, built into their schedule, which essentially acts as more math support. Uh, so teachers will either recommend them for that, or if they're your child is in Algebra 1 now, they will either be recommended for Geometry or Geometry Honors. As for science, it's either science eight. If your child's in science eight, they will go on to earth science. And if um, they are in bi um, earth science now, they'll be recommended for bio um, or bio uh, honors. As for world language, uh, students who are in Spanish AB now, which are the students who took it every, uh, who did not um, take it every day in sixth and seventh grade, those students will go on to Spanish 2A next year. Um, for students who are in Spanish 8, French 8, or Latin 8 this year, they will be recommended um, if you're French 8, you'll go on to French 2. If you're in La Latin 8, you'll go on to Latin 2. And if you are in Spanish 8, you'll be recommended for Spanish 2 or Spanish 2A. Oh, it's a mouthful. Uh, but essentially, if you have any questions about the recommendation for your child, please reach out to your um, to their teacher uh, to get more information about that. Um, okay, uh, February 2nd, the portal opens. You'll be getting a Connect Ed message about that, where students will be given the opportunity to choose some of their electives for next year. Um, it, the, edge, the academic classes will be locked, so you won't be able to touch those. Um, but in terms of electives, you'll be getting course numbers and students can actually input the course that they want. For example, studio art or band. Um, and they will have until February 7th to input those choices. 
Some students will have one choice, some will have two choices. I'll explain that later. Um, but they can all put down at least two. Some students may choose only one and then uh, choose to have one place be a study hall. Uh, but that will uh, close on February 7th. That means after that point, you can't put in uh, a choice into the system. The week of February 8th, I will be pushing in to the PE classes and I will, I will be meeting with every eighth grader individually to talk about their course selections for next year, to confirm, to ask, you know, to answer any questions that they may have. Um, it's great because it gives me a chance to have, to have a conversation with every single student to make sure that they understand um, the options for next year and to answer any questions that they have. So um, that's a great time. I, I love doing this, this part. I like this. I like the course selections. It gives me a chance with everybody. Um, okay, March 19th, second trimester report card. These, um, there might be some additional recommendations. Some teachers who might have not recommended a child for honors might have felt that maybe that child has now met the standard and might recommend them for honors on the uh, report card. Um, vast majority of recommendations I do believe will be done though um, in January. Um, and then April 9th is the deadline for parents to waive their child into a course their child was not recommended for and to change electives. So there's two things going on that day. The first thing is if your child was not recommended for honors and you want them to take the honors course, uh, you have to sign a waiver form. That form will be on my Schoology page. And I believe it, it probably, I think will probably also go on to the, um, onto our web page as well under quick links. Um, but you can probably get everything on my Schoology page. And I encourage you to go on there starting next week and look at any of the forms that you think you may need. That's a, a form the parents and the child and the teacher will have to sign. It doesn't mean that the teacher consent, uh, agrees that the child should take the honors course, what it does it just has a teacher acknowledge that the child um, wants to take the honors course. Um, those are due on the 9th. Also on the 9th is the last day that kids can change their, their elective. So let's say after that point, a child wants to change an elective and the portal is closed. I need to get an email from a parent just saying, hi, we thought about it. We'd like to change from band to JJ vocal jazz or something like that. Uh, so we can do that up until April 9th. After that point, um, that's the last day to change your course. Um, and then eight, August is when the high schools will be available on the portal. I believe that's late August uh, usually. Uh, just know that I do believe, you know, even though you can't change a course, you can take out a course. So let's say after the ninth, your child chose two electives and then giving it a second thought, you realize, uh, I think we wanna make one of them a study hall. That's not a problem. Um, anytime after the ninth, you're welcome to email me and let me know and I can take one of the courses out of the system. It's just about adding something. You can't add something after the ninth, but you can take something out if need be. Basic scheduling terms, graduation requirements, it's all on the course description guide. I will not bore you with that. All the main academic courses, everyday courses are one credit. Every other day courses are a half a credit. Uh, the transcript. We all hear about the transcript. It's on my record, it's the transcript. Well, this is a transcript. If you ever wanted to know what one looks like, I think I was here like 15 years before I saw one of these things. Um, it's pretty basic. It's what colleges see. Um, and it doesn't show that much. It really just shows the final average in any course that your child took at the high school. This of course would include Algebra One, which is a Regents course. And if your child is in earth science, it's also a Regents course that also goes on the high school transcript. And thirdly, if your child, um, uh, all students, their final average in foreign language will also go on the high school transcript. So it's not an average of sixth, seventh and eighth grade. It's just a final average of eighth grade foreign language. Uh, so keep that in mind because a couple parents have asked me about that. So unfortunately, if your child got a 99 in uh, Spanish six, that will not be part of the average. It is uh, solely from this year. And if you look in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, I know it's kind of small, uh, the regions, the the grade on the regions that your child gets on the regions will also appear on the transcript. Of course, I don't know if we're having regions this year or not. Uh, in June, I don't believe that's been um, 
that's been said yet, uh, but any regions that your child does take during their high school career will, um, will show up on the regions, um, uh, show up on the transcript. Okay, so a traditional ninth grade schedule, to be perfectly honest, we like to make a really big deal with them, but it's not that that much different than what they have here at the middle school. Everyone will have English, social studies, math, science, world language, PE, and every other day science lab. That's regardless of what science they take. Um, they will get a chance for two electives or possibly one, depending, if, um, depending on certain circumstances. There's a lunch period. All ninth graders must take lunch every day. There's not an option to forego lunch to take another class. Obviously, we want ninth graders, and particularly in this situation, we want kids to have time to decompress, to meet with friends. Um, they need to have a break. Um, so that's, that's something that all ninth graders have to do. PE is also, um, it's also a required course every other day. You will hear about different options down the road when um, varsity option. I won't get into that now, but when students take more than one varsity, uh, more than one varsity team, they can be exempt from a, a a quarter of PE. Uh, it gets tricky, but that's not an option in um, ninth grade. So if students ask you about that, to say, nope, it's not an option in ninth grade anyway, we'll talk about it down the road. Um, other things that will be in your child's schedule is peer group. That is something that all ninth graders will participate in. I believe it's on a rotating schedule during lunch. It's led by a, uh, a selected peer group leader, upperclassmen. And I know it's something that I think, especially in given these times, will be a great thing for kids to, to really connect with other students and talk about the transition to the high school and also to get some mentorship from older students who have been trained um, in working. I know the high school students, I'm sure, are chomping at the bit to get um, to connect with kids. So I think that's going to be a great thing, especially given the fact that we've been in this tick pandemic. And finally, uh, special education classes. So if your child is in, let's say has a resource or a learning lab, that would take a place of one of their electives. Um, and also if your child gets recommended for that every other day math lab, that, that would also take an every other day spot. So if you're doing the math in your head, for those um, parents who have a child who gets a period of support and is recommended for the other day learning lab, um, it does make the schedule kind of tight, but we do make it work. And for all those students, we will be having CSE meetings in the spring where students will be invited and we will talk about ways to make the schedule work for them. So not to worry, if you have specific questions about special education and how that will work in the schedule, we, have, um, we will address all that in your child's um, uh, annual review meeting in the spring. Okay, math, like I said before, these are the four options. Science, same thing, bio honors, biology, earth science. This is the waiver form. It's just the, it's just a copy of the most updated one. It will be on uh, the website once students find out um, what the recommendations are. Uh, it requires signatures, as you see, once the student's signature and the uh, parent's signature uh, and the teacher's signature is on the form, it then gets submitted to me. I then sign it and then I enter the new course into um, the system. Uh, I will make one comment about waving into a course. Um, you know, people will ask me, well, do you think my child should do it? And I, it's really a, a family decision. Obviously, a recommendation at this point is, is typically around for students who have a 92 average in a course. If your child has above a 92 average in a course, you can expect that they would probably be recommended for honors. That being said, you want to think about, um, I don't know, I think in this, especially in this year, I say this all the time, every time I do eighth grade, but I feel like this year it bears a lot more saying because you're, you know, they've been home for a long time or they've been in school for only a couple of days a week. And when they go to high school, I'm hoping that we're going to be in, normal, more, in a more normal situation, which means students are going to probably hopefully be on the campus all the time. And it's going to be very exciting, but there's going to be a lot of stimuli and a lot to adjust to and getting back to normal life. Um, and I just want everyone to be cautious about making sure that we don't have students overextending themselves in their first year as a ninth grader, especially after coming out of this pandemic. Um, so for example, if your child had a 91 point something average and wasn't recommended, and there were a couple of family circumstances that made it maybe harder to get, 
get their usual grades and you want to wave in, that's maybe one thing. But if your child has maybe uh, an, 80, an 84 average, maybe it's best to just have a really great year in the course that they were recommended for. That does not mean they can't do honors down the road or do another accelerated course, even in math down the road. That is still an option, even for students who are not accelerated in math. Um, they can still accelerate in the high school. So there's always pathways, um, but it's always, we, we never want kids to be crawling out of a hole when they're a ninth grader. Um, we'd always like kids to have a really great year and then add rigor and add challenge as the years go on, because that's, that's how we, we see growth and that's how we really build confidence with kids. Um, so if, you, if you're really unsure about it, feel free to reach out to me. But of course, obviously nobody knows your child better from an academic perspective than a teacher. Um, but I just ask people to please be conservative when it comes to those waivers. And sometimes it comes from the kid more than the parents. So if you need a little bit of backup, I'm happy to help you. <laughs> Humanities, uh, English, social studies, obviously, world languages. Um, we, I just, you can please note we don't offer, we are not offering Spanish one next year. So all of our students will be taking Spanish two, 2A, French two. Latin one is pending enrollment. So in other words, there are some students that may, that can choose to take a second world language as a ninth grader. Um, and that would be Latin one. And of course, as you see, it's pending enrollment. I would just say like that is, that's a tough thing to take on as a ninth grader, a six academic. I would really, unless your child is a really, really strong language student, I would say that's probably a better choice for another year and not as a freshman. Um, probably best to get their sea legs, get used to the high school, get used to their schedule. And then if they wanna add a second, um, a second world language, uh, then they are welcome to do so. Um, but once again, there are some individual circumstances and if you feel your child might be appropriate, you know, feel free to ask um, your child's language teacher if you think that they could handle it, reach out to me. I'm happy to help in any way I can. And uh, same in Mandarin Chinese, that uh, cannot take the place of another language, but it could be added as an elective, um, but that's also pending enrollment. Humanities, uh, all students uh, in the uh, ninth grade have to take one, one year of an art, music, or tech class. Um, some of the art offerings are studio art, that's something that students could take and fulfill that requirement. Photography one and two can be taken, but they would have to be as a second elective. Um, they, that cannot be fulfilled as a, as a music art or tech requirement. I have another form on that and you'll see where I have it all laid out. Um, that'll be another slide. Performing arts, we have something, uh, it's not called choir anymore. It's now been rebranded as JJ Vocal Jazz. Still we have concert bands, string orchestra, um, and there are some auditions for some select programs. With that, if your child is interested in anything that's more select, they can reach out to their music teacher about that. There's intro to theater, which is an every other day elective. And then there's music history and theory, which is an everyday course that also fulfills that music art or tech requirement. Business. Um, the only uh, course on this list that fulfills the music art and tech requirement is the design and draw for production course. Um, but they can also take business dynamics as an everyday elective and computer science one and two. I believe that's every day for the first half of the year is computer science one and then computer science two is every day the second, uh, the second semester. This is the form I was talking about. This is a good form. This is the, sh I'll, I'll be showing this to the kids. As you can see, students have to take one year um, in one of the starred courses. So I always say to them, pick a starred course and then go from there. As you can see, it's studio art, music history and theory, JJ vocal jazz, concert band, string orchestra. The nice thing about this year is that for kids who've been taking a music class for the last couple of years and don't like it, they don't have to anymore. Um, they, can go, they can go down uh, the track of art or technology. We have uh, really great sequences for both. Um, which I think is the nice thing about the high school is that kids can really start to customize their own interests. Um, like for myself, I never took an art class, never will take an art class. I don't draw, I don't paint. I lived in the band room and the choir room, but 
and it was great. And I got a lot of art, art time, but I never, I never picked up a pencil or a paintbrush ever. So it's great. And it's, I think it's relieving for kids because I kind of feel that they get to be themselves, which is great. Um, and obviously kids can pick a second elective as well if they have room, but there is something I'd like everyone to take a look at. It's called the good old study hall. And I know that for some parents, people will ask, well, will it look bad on a high school transcript if my child's taking a study hall? And the answer is no. Uh, first of all, a study hall doesn't go on the transcript. But second of all, a study hall, I think is something that in my experience, a lot of students take and for good reason. Um, we have to remember that this is gonna be a big transition unto itself, especially in these circumstances. And to have some time in your schedule to get some stuff done, to reach out to a teacher, to, um, to go back and, and, and study, to review. You know, these kids are going to be starting to get used to not just navigating the high school, navigating the social world again, but also getting involved in all the different great activities that they're not doing right now. They're going to be on more teams and more outside activities, and their schedules are going to become a lot more filled. So for the, there's nothing wrong with a study hall. And I really say, unless your child is gung-ho and want those two electives, that's their big passion, there's nothing wrong with a study hall in a schedule, particularly if your child is waving into classes or is taking a very heavy, heavy load. Um, study halls are a great thing and I, I'm all for them. Uh, no one's gonna get off easy. They have a full workload. Um, so there's nothing wrong with a study hall and I'm off my soapbox. Okay. Anne-Marie? Yes. Um, before we move on, and I know that there's the things to consider slides coming up. Um, there was a question in here about what is the, and I know we're gonna get to questions, but yeah. before we move on somewhere else, what's the difference between honors and regular? Um, so I don't know if you wanted to just make a little statement about that before that might get lost in some of the other questions that we have. Sure, sure. So there is actually, um, and I'm going, it's, Thanks, thanks for asking. There's actually gonna be two documents that I'm also gonna be putting up onto my page. Uh, they're not there yet because I'm just waiting to get some confirmation from the science and math department on just any revised language for the new year. Uh, but essentially the difference between honors and, um, and, and non-honors is rigor and pace and independence. So students that are taking bio honors and uh, geometry honors are gonna be taking a course at a much faster pace, will be expected to do a lot more independent work on their own, will also be expected to dive a lot more deeper into the curriculum than they would otherwise. And it's going to be, um, it's gonna be a class that's gonna also expect students to think outside the box, to uh, learn, to, to investigate on their own, to really plan their time well, to really be able to do a lot of written work. So for example, we're a lab in, in, in bio and standard bio class might be a very simple paragraph. The bio honors class might be might expect a lot more written explanation, a lot more proof or evidence. Um, there's a lot more writing typically in the bio honors course in particular. And the same thing with the, with the uh, geometry honors course, everything is just gonna be more in depth at a faster pace. Um, and you know what, if your child is ready for it, then it's a really awesome, great course to take. Um, and but I, like I said, I always defer to the teachers and if, uh, they, they're, they're usually right. Um, we do have students that have waved into courses before and have done great, um, but we've also had the other thing happen. Um, but honors is basically uh, just faster pace, more rigorous, more in depth and more, um, it really expects students to, to be really self-motivated and to uh, search answers on their own. Does that explain, hopefully? Yeah, yeah okay. thank you, thank you. Okay. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna be putting up two documents, comparing it, um, but I'm just making sure I get the language right from the teachers. So when I do, um, I, will, I will post it on my page. Um, so documents to come, uh, things to consider. And that's, I think I've kind of, you know, um, touched on a lot of this already, but, you know, ultimately high school is going to be, once again, we, we're really encouraging kids to be more independent and responsible. In a weird way, COVID has, some, has somehow forced students to be a little more maintain, you know, be more 
be more organized, manage your time well because they're having to go on to, uh, you know, log on to courses on their own, check the bell schedule. Whereas when they're here, they just kind of follow the crowd. Um, be organized. But I think a big thing is being able to self advocate. Some kids are very quiet and, you know, more adverse to reaching out to teachers and to adults. But I think if we want them to get the most out of the high school experience, we want them to be able to speak out so that we can give them everything that they need. Um, so that's something that think about your own child and how you can encourage that even starting now. Uh, reach out to Ms. McSweeney, ask her a question. I'm not gonna call Ms. McSweeney, you call Ms. McSweeney, you reach out to her. I don't think I'm that scary, I think they can do it. A lot of them have done it and once they do it once, they're usually more apt to reach out to me again. So I think it should be fine. Um, and finally, the last bullet, establishing an early relationship with your school counselor. You know, the, I mean, the honest truth is that some students I, I haven't spent that much time with, um, obviously, especially since I haven't seen some of them for a long time. Uh, but at the high school, every student is going to have to get to know their high school counselor. So the high school counselor can help them plan the best curriculum for them over the years. And eventually your high school counselor will be writing your child's college um, college essay. So it's important for your, for your child to be able to get to know the counselor. So the counselor can really figure out what is the best academic plan for your child for the four years that they're at the high school and beyond. Um, and I will be talking quite a bit about that with the kids when I push into the classes in March and April. More things, establishing positive relationships with teachers, getting involved, pursuing passions. And like I said, consider joining a club now. Um, we, I know uh, we have more offerings, right, Jeff, than we, uh, as, as time has gone on. Um, and as I'm sure you've probably heard, if you have older siblings, we've a, there's a lot of options at the high school. And even for kids who maybe didn't get that involved with clubs here at the middle school, I know that being involved at the high school is something that's, expected and something that's encouraged. And I know that students that get involved just feel a lot more connected. And especially given how so many kids are, are just feeling disconnected right now, I think just to join something, get involved with something, I think is really important for kids um, when they get to the high school next year. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, you know, we, you can look at our, on our website and the JGMS website, we do have um, a clubs page up top, activities and yeah. clubs, and you can see our club brochure. Uh, we just added and announced if if you were on here early, you heard our announcement about the yearbook uh, club that's just starting up. I believe it's the same advisor, both middle school and high school. Um, so there again, those connections are important. And and I, I, I don't think that that can be said enough, Anne-Marie, what you just said about um, students, you know, we're getting a lot of reports about students feeling isolated, um, whether they are in the same class, but in different cohorts, they're not seeing students, but just in a non-academic environment, um, to make those connections, make a connection with a teacher you may never have had before, and feel what it likes to be involved, feel what it feels like to be involved in something that's outside of academics. Um, you know, uh, the sports program, the after school intramurals, all those things have kind of gone away this year. There are great ways to still be connected. And again, for our eighth grade students specifically, if students haven't tried something, it it definitely looks good on a college. I know it doesn't go on a transcript, but it does go on the college resume that you've been part of an activity or a club for a number of years. So again, you've talked a lot about passions, I think over the last last half an hour, um, you know, encourage the students to explore their passions over the next, you know, couple of months by joining a club. And, and you know, the worst thing that happens is they try something and they don't like it and they know to not try that again at the high school. So um, again, I, I think our teachers are non-threatening and, um, you know, looking to have as many students in, enjoy the clubs as possible. So I think that's a great suggestion. Yeah, it's important. And um, yeah, especially, especially uh, given the fact of this year, I think it's great for them to get involved in anything, even if it's something, a small commitment, it's, it's a start, right? Um, okay, so this is just, it's kind of a little old school. I uh, used to have kids, used to have a carbon copy where kids would fill out the form and, and they were like, they got very excited, like, wow, what's this, carbon paper? I've never heard of this before. Well, I don't, I'm not doing, using the carbon paper. I'm not even asking for this form back, but I will be sharing it with the students just so they kind of have a visual of, of the nine period day and they can kind of use it as a guide. 
um, so that they can kind of figure out, okay, so this is my day, or these are the classes that I have, and this is, uh, here's my spot, here's I can how I can fill everything in. So that will be something I'll be explaining more in detail with the kids. I won't bore you all with the little logistics of it, um, but that's, uh, that's the form that kind of gives them a visual. Um, and, and what I would say about the, the going into the classes next week, I would highly encourage you to ask your child about how the presentation was. I'm going to classes next week. So everybody will be, I will have gotten to everybody by the end of, of next week. And anyone who's absent, since I'm pre-recording part of the presentation, I will forward that, that recording to any student who was not in class. So they will get the bulk of the presentation anyway. If they have any questions, they can reach out to me, of course. Um, but I want them to really take ownership of this. And before you reach out to me, please uh, please encourage them to reach out to me because um, I want them to be able to feel involved and feel empowered. It's very important to me. Um, uh, questions, actually, I want to put one, one more thing up. I have, this is my, um, we can see this. This is my Schoology page. I know that you all have, um, you all have access. I don't, I have not messaged, I think I might have messaged parents once on this, um, but I probably will send a couple more messages in the next couple of weeks. This is my page here. As you can see, I put a post to the kids this week so they knew when I was going into the foreign language classes. Um, and a couple of kids reached out to me even from this. So it's great. I know they're reading, um, which made me happy. Uh, I also am starting this material section, which is, I just wanted to show you where this is. I'm still working on it but I had added some things already. So this is a link, a link for students. And they've been sent this a couple of times. That's my Calendly link that kids can click on and make an appointment with me. But then I also have this thing, as you can see, it's unpublished. So I'm waiting until next week to, uh, for, the, for the anxiety to heighten. So yeah. I'm keeping yeah. unpublished until next week. And I'm also just still adding stuff. But so far I have, um, I'll give you a sneak peek. Um, it's a course selection form, the waiver form. This is a scheduling timeline that I just created for kids. It just has a couple of most important dates for them. So they know it's, it's kind of like a truncated version of, of this, this presentation, just one page. Um, and then I have, this is the um, course description guide. This is the link to the entire, um, all the courses that are on the high school. Uh, web page, and I just want to point that out as well. I will be giving out to all the students, or it'll be on this page, a description of all the courses that ninth graders can take. So anything that they cannot take will not be part of what I put on here, because I don't want to confuse them or get their hopes up. You can't take ceramics, not next year, because they will ask. Can I take drawing and painting? Not yet. Um, so what I will do is I will put that on, the, uh, that I'm still uh, working on that. This JJ High School course description guide is great for parents. You can go on there on here, um, but um, right now it's already on the high school website on the left-hand side. It's great because there's some flow charts on there and you can see the trajectory of the math sequence or the science sequence, or if your child's interested in tech courses or taking up a, a five-year music sequence. There's a lot of great information in that course description guide and it does answer a lot of questions. Um, so I highly recommend if you have any questions about courses or, or down the road, what are next steps or courses that you can take as a junior or senior, um, feel free to refer to that. I do know some of it, but when it starts getting into AP calculus, it's kind of out of my, uh, out of my wheelhouse. Um, but I definitely recommend um, clicking on that link and taking a look at what's offered down the road. So you can kind of get a, 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 long, um, a longer sense of uh, over time what, what kids can take. So Anna Marie, thank, thank you. I think um, a lot of people are posting questions in the chat. So um, I'll give you a little opportunity to kind of scan through there. I'll, I'll answer one of the first ones. So one of the questions is, will the eighth graders be able to have a, a, an in-person tour before the end of the year? Um, I know that the high school is working on that right now um, and we'll be emailing, I believe our eighth grade families to say that they're going to do something virtually, whether it's pre-recorded and then the ability to ask questions, something like that. But right now, we are not planning anything in person with people in different buildings. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't know kind of like what is beyond this year. So there may be the opportunity over the summer to do something like that. But as of right now, what we really, the important part is I think making sure that students are aware of the electives that they can take, 
seeing the faces of the people who may be teaching those electives, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we know that that's an important process. Typically what we've done over the last couple of years is the eighth graders have actually gone up and done a little tour of the high school, just kind of walked through the halls, got to hear some of the presentations, but just given where we are right now, we cannot do that right now. So I know that they are working on a virtual presentation and you should, you should start to receive um, more information from the high school. For those of you who have current fifth graders, you've probably already seen that the middle school is reaching out to our fifth grade parents um, to talk about the transition. So you'll likely be hearing less from us and more from the high school over the next coming months. Okay, very good. Um, I can look at the, I'll just read one of the questions. I'm gonna combine two together. It's all regarding study hall. I think I know this one. Um, if students take a study hall in ninth grade, will they have to make it up? Answer is no. Um, that's just something that some kids never take a study hall. Some kids have a study hall every year. It's just an open spot in their schedule. Um, can they fit a study hall into their schedule and still be um, paid to have enough credits to graduate? The answer is absolutely yes. Our students take typically way more credits than they need to graduate from the high school. Not having enough credits, and I, kids ask me this all the time too, but will I have enough to graduate? You will all have more than enough to graduate. So that should not be a concern. You can easily take a study hall every year and have more than enough credits to graduate, provided that you're taking all the academic classes that you're supposed to be taking, which they don't have a choice, they will. Um, so it should be fine. Um, what do they do in study hall? Study hall is a, uh, for ninth graders, is uh, supervised. So it's in a classroom. They get assigned to an actual class, just like it is this year. They have to, it, it, uh, attendance is taken. They're not allowed to just leave and do their own thing. They have to sit there and do their work, go on their laptops, whatever they have to do. Um, but it is a sign. They can't they're, they can't roam the halls or walk around uh, the campus. It's not allowed. Um, as they get older, I believe upperclassmen are allowed to have it more like a free. Um, but ninth graders, it, it's, it's assigned. Um, um, you want to talk about how counselors are assigned, Anne Marie? Oh, thank you. Yes, counselors are assigned alphabetically um, at the high school. Um, so um, I do every year it depends on how many numbers of students are in a particular grade. So for example, um, you know, with, with the ninth grade this year, you know, Mrs. Jones could have students with the last names A through BR, um, but then this grade is actually bigger. So maybe it'll be, it'll be a different cutoff, but it's done alphabetically. Um, some people ask if it's done by families, it's not, um, but sometimes it just kind of is a coincidence because obviously if, if that counselor ends, tends to get people with the beginning out part of the alphabet, you may have uh, certain families, um, but it is that alphabetical. And it's uh, counselors have students um, in all four grades. Unlike me, where I have all students in one grade, counselors up there have a small portion of each grades nine through 12. Uh, there's a couple in here, thank you. There's a couple in here that I'll take. So if okay. Earth Science Regents is not given in June, does a student have to take a bio regent? So I can only share with you what happened at the end of last year. So again, for those of you who have current ninth graders, um, basically if students were passing a class, then they were given credit for um, the regents. Um, we received word in December that the January regents, which we don't take at the middle school, but any January regents were canceled. Um, so we don't know yet what that means. I believe the uh, Katona Lewisboro School District has a minimal expectation on the number of regions that students have to take. Uh, so we, we, we kind of like have a higher standard than the states and regions courses. So I know that we fulfill the minimum requirements for the regions that need to be taken. Um, but again, I think that that will kind of like resolve itself hopefully over the next couple of months. <clears throat> and then there is a question here about, uh, is there an option for current eighth grade Latin students to switch to a new modern world language? That's more of a high school question. It has to do with the high school ca course catalog. I know that uh, Mrs. McSweeney said that, you know, based on enrollment, Latin or uh, Mandarin would run a, a Latin one or a Mandarin one class. As of right now, what we understand is there is no option there, um, but there is some, uh, there are some changes oftentimes in the spring about high school course options. So that is definitely a question that I would ask during the Q&A that will exist with the high school. Right, and just to and just to reiterate, with the Mandarin, um, that is considered only an additional. It's almost considered more like an elective. So, in other words, if your child was taking Latin this year, they couldn't switch and then just take Mandarin. 
um, they have to take they have to take Spanish, French, or Latin. Uh, Mandarin would be in addition to another language that they're taking. Um, and also, uh, just, just so you understand in terms of credits, so students who took Lat um, Spanish, uh, all the students are gonna get a high school credit in language this year. Um, so in order, it, it, we don't really advise students to change a language. We want them to con continue the trajectory of at least heading into three years of a language. You want to be able to show mastery and show that you're not just flipping around from language to language. That being said, a student who's in Latin should definitely continue with Latin come next year. And down the road, they could either try Mandarin if it's offered, or sometimes we do have French one or Spanish one, but it does depend on the year. In the last couple of years, they have not had um, Spanish one or Latin one, I mean, or, or French one. Um, let's see, um, just the written descriptions. Do the kids base their class description selections on just the written descriptions or other teacher descriptions, presentations? I'll be talking about that in more detail with kids next week, explaining some of the classes. Um, the vast majority of classes are things that they, they, I think they have some understanding of, band, um, orchestra, obviously, but I'll, be, I'll talk more about courses they might not be more um, familiar with, like business dynamics, design and draw for production. Um, I will be able to talk about those in, in, in depth. Um, and I also uh, recommend that if they want mo even more specific information, they can always ask their, for example, if they're interested in design and draw, ask Mr. Ask Mr. Luchier, the tech teacher, or, or Mrs. Daly Savo. They're great uh, resources for specific um, course, uh, course information as well. The, you know, the only other thing I'll just share with you is that a majority of the ninth grade, and I know you said it already, Ms. Sweeney, but the majority of the ninth grade schedules are already going to be done. So every student must take a ninth grade uh, ELA class. Every student must take a ninth grade social studies class. The recommendation for the science class they have to take is made. The recommendation for the math class they have to take is made. They have to take a world language class, and we've just said that that's recommended moving forward. I mean, there are other things, <clears throat> like that's already more than half of a schedule. So there's there's very little variability in the ninth grade schedule. But again, just like we talked about, there's a little more freedom for study halls or free periods for you know the, the older students that the same thing exists in scheduling with allowing students to kind of follow their passion as they as they move up through the high school. Yeah, and one last thing about uh, passions, I know for students who love humanities, sometimes they feel like they get the short end of the stick because we don't have uh, advanced courses in that here at the middle school. But I just tell them, your time will come. And there are a lot of great advanced courses at the high school for students who are interested in um, uh, literature courses and history courses. Um, so maybe not as much in ninth grade, but there are gonna be some opportunities for students to take more advanced in-depth courses at the high school. If you look at that course description book, you'll be, I mean, I wanna go back and take some of those classes. <laughs> they sound so fun. Um, so that's just something for everyone to be aware of that there are opportunities for kids who are more humanities, um, you know, based to, to really uh, sink their teeth into something. So thank you. That looks like the end of the, the written questions and we'll, we'll be happy to stay on. But you know, thank you to Taryn and the other members of the PTO for setting this up. Thank you to Ms. McSweeney for the preparation because things do change every year a little bit from our eighth grade and for our counselors, it's every three years that they're kind of coming back to something. And it's, uh, it's tough because Ms. McSweeney will kind of like shepherd the eighth graders up to uh, the high school and then kind of circle back and grab the current fifth graders and bring them up into the middle school as well. So, um, you know, thank you, uh, Emory, for the amount of time that you've spent kind of getting to know the students even during a pandemic. And I know that there's a lot more work that needs to be done to get ready for them, get them ready for the high school. But again, there will be more um, information coming out from the high school, but we hope that this was a good first step in kind of your, your base knowledge of what that transition process looks like, especially for those of you with your oldest child. So thank you for spending the time with us this morning. And again, we'll be around the Schoology page exists. Um, and I know that uh, Ms. McSweeney will be kind of pouring knowledge about the transition into uh, the kids' heads over the next month or so, definitely. So again, thank you so much to everybody. And I know 
Ms. McSmith, you might want to say something else. Yeah, no, just thanks, Jeff. I, I, um, it's, it, it's a great grade. I love the kids. I can't believe that we were just opening their lockers and telling them not to wear their backpacks. Now we have no lockers and they can wear their backpacks. So times have changed a bit, um, but I love this class. They're great kids. Um, and I'm looking forward to talking about the high school because I feel like we're talking about some, I feel like it's some good things on the horizon. So it's really an exciting time. Uh, please re feel free to reach out to me via email. I'm happy to answer any questions that I have um, or any, anything that you have. And, you know, moving forward, um, yeah, I, 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 I giving a, I'm giving a presentation tonight about sixth grade to sixth grade parents all in one night. So I never graduate, only the kids do. Uh, but it's a pleasure to work with all of your, all of your kids and, you um, and I, I look forward to the next couple of months of making, making them as good as possible for everyone. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.